CES 2020 is about to wind down, and in this video, we're going to go over some of the more interesting devices and the tech that I found when roaming the showroom floors. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. Starting off with some Apple-related products, we have the new Bridge Pro Plus keyboard for your iPad Pro. We have actually made an entire video about the original Bridge Pro keyboard. If you wanna check that out, go ahead and click the link in the top corner. But obviously what separates this new model from the old is the inclusion of a built-in trackpad. Even though mouse support is technically an accessibility feature in iOS 13, users were clamoring for a case like this and Bridge is now delivering it. It looks and feels pretty similar to an Apple trackpad and makes the experience much more laptop-like and seamless. Now for those who've purchased an original Bridge Pro keyboard, fear not, the company has actually developed a standalone trackpad that you can purchase to couple with your case. Also, for those who might not know, Bridge acquired Henge Docks and are now revamping and rebranding the vertical dock line. So be on the lookout for new 13-inch MacBook Air options, as well as an option for the 16-inch MacBook Pro. In our last video, we checked out a few charging options from Griffin that used GAN technology to reduce the footprint of the wall charger, but also offer faster speeds with better thermal improvements. GAN made its way into this new Omnia lineup from Aki that features these tiny little chargers capable of charging MacBooks and even the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the new 100-watt charger option. It's pretty mind-blowing at how small these wall chargers actually are. Hyperjuice has a small 100-watt charger too, but this one is a little bit bigger than the Aki because it features two USB-C and two USB Type-A ports. So in theory, you could just travel around with just this one charger for almost all of your devices, and it's still much smaller than a traditional MacBook Pro charging brick. In our last video, we talked about a smart faucet that unfortunately was not HomeKit equipped, but Moen did show me a smart shower system that is HomeKit enabled, and it can also be controlled using your voice through Siri. The Moen smart shower can obviously adjust temperature, set specific shower lengths, start and stop the shower from your phone, and much more. If you're looking for a Siri slash HomeKit enabled faucet, Kohler has the new Cetra touchless faucet, which operates via motion control and or voice commands. Kohler also introduced the Moxie shower head, which has an awesome sounding Harman Kardon Bluetooth speaker integrated right into the center of the shower head that's also removable, but unfortunately, it's not HomeKit or Siri enabled, but I still thought it was pretty cool. Speaking of audio, a new lineup of smart speakers and soundbars from JBL slash Harman Kardon will be hitting the market soon, and it will feature AirPlay 2 built in. The Citation smart speaker and soundbar lineup from Harman Kardon will offer you a wide range of products with premium, high quality sound, and the new JBL 9.1 soundbar offers up an incredible true wireless surround sound experience, all packed into a soundbar and subwoofer combination. The soundbar actually has two detachable surround sound speakers that can give you 10 hours of use on a single charge and can be placed behind you in your home entertainment setup. The demo that we got was actually pretty incredible sounding from this tiny all-in-one form factor. Plus, it also features AirPlay 2. Razer made a lineup of iPhone cases called the Razer Archetype, designed for mobile gamers, and it offers up a new thermal solution during long periods of gameplay where your device usually gets super hot. Basically, Razer added ventilation to the case, which is a pretty great idea, and it also made it look super sleek and minimal. It comes in a few different colorways, including this awesome red, gold, and black limited edition case. Razer also announced a new dual-sided mobile gaming controller called the Kishi controller. It's certified by Apple, features a lightning connector or USB-C, which has pass-through capabilities, allowing users to charge the controller and their iPhones at the same time. It also looks and feels much like a traditional Xbox controller and should work with iPhone 6 and newer, as well as select Android devices. One last side note with Razer, the company is also working on a 5G router called the Sela 5G, and basically it's designed to spread your carrier's 5G network all throughout your home and become your new internet service provider, basically. Since 5G speeds are ridiculously fast, this concept is much more feasible, making internet service providers basically replaceable. But for now, this is only just a concept. Speaking of concepts, boy, is CES just filled with them. 
This next portion of our video is pretty much all about concepts. Some concepts that are useful and ready, and some that are, well, interesting, but probably not going to happen for a very long time. I'm not sure where the OnePlus Concept One phone lands, in my opinion, because while I am super impressed with the design and tech that goes into creating a smartphone with multiple cameras, and then calling them invisible, even though it's technically not invisible, they are hiding behind the special glass and there is a way to make them appear and disappear by simply opening and closing the camera app. I'm not sure this is all entirely necessary. But I am hoping that this trend actually continues where phone manufacturers just hide the cameras or make them flush with the phone. LG has actually done this in the past, and if OnePlus wants to hide theirs behind glass to make them sort of invisible, absolutely be my guest. The glass also has more functionality than simply hiding the cameras, but instead acts as an ND filter for these lenses and can reduce the light down a few stops. Now, during my testing, it was subtle, so it probably won't show very well here on camera, but hopefully when you're outdoors, it should be much more noticeable. Sticking with mobile devices, Dell introduced the Concept UFO and Concept Ori. The latter being a foldable laptop, much like what we saw with Lenovo's ThinkPad X1 Fold, where you have a 13 inch OLED foldable panel that can be used in various different form factors with an on-screen keyboard or with a keyboard attachment. Concept UFO is Dell's take on, well, a Nintendo Switch style gaming PC that features two removable game pads, a large and very vivid eight inch display smack dab in the middle, and comes with the ability to be docked into a TV or monitor. Honestly, while I was checking it out, it was hard for me not to just picture this being the new next generation Nintendo Switch, but then I saw the Windows startup menu pop up on screen and realized it's being powered by Windows 10. So for what it's worth, I'm totally on board with more devices like this. And during my brief testing, the Concept UFO seemed to work incredibly well, and I really haven't noticed any lag or deficiencies during gameplay. While these devices are just concepts at the current moment, they didn't feel like unfinished prototypes or products that are so wild and obscure that we probably won't see them for years, if ever. Concept vehicles are a good example of the opposite. There are so many different autonomous car concepts and ideas at CES, but the most surprising came from Sony with its concept car called the Vision S. The Vision S is a sleek, modern, and downright beautiful looking concept car that will unfortunately only remain a dream as of right now, as Sony has absolutely no plans to sell this car whatsoever. Sony is actually hoping consumers and other manufacturers will see what new advancements in technologies for vehicles are possible moving forward. The car did feature high-end Sony sound equipment and a Sony LiDAR setup that powers the side view cameras that replace the traditional mirrors. All of this seemed and looked cool, but I really couldn't get anywhere near the car to actually see anything inside. Samsung also had a few interesting concepts like the indoor garden fridge, which you guessed it, gives consumers the ability to garden indoors, which is perfect for those who might live in an apartment and they really want to garden, but can't. The garden fridge will allow people to grow herbs and produce indoors all year round with cool controlled temperatures and built-in lights and a built-in watering system. Samsung also introduced the Bali, which received a lot of attention this week, mostly because it's not entirely clear just exactly what this thing is going to be useful for. Bali is a robotic ball that rolls around your house and can respond to voice commands. It's supposed to do things like serve as an alarm, record video, play with pets, or manage smart home devices, but for now, it mostly just rolls around. It does come in a few different colors though, so there's that. Finally, here are a few random things I learned while wandering around the showroom floors at CES. Number one, cat litter machines are a real thing, and if I had a cat, I'd probably be all for not having to change the litter box thanks to this machine called the Litter Robot. The Litter Robot 3 Connect can actually be controlled by your iPhone. It sifts the litter and places everything in a bag for you to throw out later. The company also makes a cat feeder robot too if you're into this thing. Number two, John Deere had a booth at CES. And while I was completely confused why, it appears that there's way more tech involved with modern day farming than I knew about. Like, way more. Anyways, this tractor here actually has an Apple CarPlay option to pair along with its built-in refrigerator and massage chairs, which I did actually test out and it was amazing. 
and I thought was actually hilarious and awesome. So I wanted to talk about it. Number three, TCL is going to be releasing a few phones under the TCL brand, and they're shaping up to be an incredible value. The TCL 10 Pro can give other smartphone manufacturers a run for its money in terms of its premium design, premium features, specs, etc. It's a beautiful looking phone and is expected to cost under $500. They also have a 5G variant of this phone, which should be priced around the same $500 mark, which is absolutely insane because I have not seen a 5G phone priced that low yet. Lastly, I saw the Rivian and Ford Mustang Mach-E in person, and they were both really awesome looking. The Rivian is expected to begin production later this year, and while I'm not a huge truck guy, I thought this thing was beautiful, and I am totally on board with this little trapdoor storage area behind the passenger seats that looked really cool in pictures and looks even better in person. That's it. There's a lot to cover at CES, and obviously I am only one person and couldn't check everything out, but be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more follow-up videos on the products that we saw at CES, and stay locked into MacRumors.com for new CES announcements. This has been Dan with MacRumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.